Hey guys and welcome to Words of Scale. So this is part two of the series where I show you my copywriting tricks. The first one was about the intro. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. I think it's pretty valuable, at least to me. This is what I'm using day in and day out. And now I want to talk to you about the perfect outline and how to create it. But let's first take a step back and decide or define what the outline is. So the outline is a plan or a structure for organizing content for a blog post. It can be helpful to create an outline before writing a blog post as it can help you organize your thoughts and ideas and ensure that your post is clear and concise. And with the advent of the AI tools and we are becoming more and more lazy with our outlines. Many of the AI tools that I have reviewed allow for the one-click generation and at the most we skim through the outline, pick and choose different subheadings, but it has to be much more than that if we want a fighting chance of ranking on top of Google. So what the outline means really is as follows. So it consists of the following elements, the introduction, which I've covered already, the main points, these are the main ideas and arguments, Supporting information, this is supporting evidence or examples that you will use to back up your main points. So everything that has to do with the original research sits here. Conclusion and call to action. And in the today's video, we'll be talking about the main points. So the H2s and H3s. We won't be covering the conclusion and the original research and the call to action. These are for the additional and next videos. So right now I will be talking about my workflow in producing a perfect outline, which is robust, which is detailed, and which Google likes. So before we dive in into the nitty gritty of the outline, I want to share my thoughts of what the current narrative is when it comes to outlines. So the narrative on the left hand side is copy and mix up. It means that everybody copies the competitor's headings. They typically add more words and they don't really offer any additional value. So this approach is okay, and if you have a very low competition keyword, for example, you have a pretty good chance of ranking, but that wouldn't work and that doesn't work with a higher competition keywords. And I think this approach is going nowhere, because if everyone is going to copy everybody else, there won't be room for unique original content, and that's what Google hates right now, at least. Now to the right hand side is a very contrasting opinion, uh, meaning that every constant piece should be unique. So in a way it's invented the wheel. Unfortunately, even though you can produce a 100% new content with fresh new ideas, it is not guaranteed to rank because what Google does gives us suggestions uh, on what, what, what they're looking for when it comes to rankable content. So Google literally tells you that I like this H2 and this H3. And for these keywords, I want these topics to be covered. So ignoring that altogether leads nowhere. And needless to say that unique approach to content creation takes a lot of time. And it's not very cost efficient if you're hiring someone. So what I'm preaching and what I think it's most practical approach is the <laughs> practical school of thought means that you need to focus on giving value, but you also need to be mindful of time efficiency and overall the amount of time you spend on writing content. So for myself, at least, I have this very draft schematic that you can follow. So in order to come up with a perfect outline, you need to find a keyword. And it is for another video if I ever do a keyword research video and let me know if you want one of those. Then you need to audit the competition. And by audit, I mean not only the content, but the backlinking profile, the domain authority, type of information that Google puts forward, whether be it listicle or images or videos. So then I scan outlines of the competition. I try to match H2s and H3s. Not word for word, obviously, but at least I'm trying to follow the same principles. And then I try to add value. And by adding value, again, I do not mean original research. This is for another video. I mean, what I mean is trying to come up with the most detailed outline that will answer everything and anything that user ever wanted to know about the topic. So let's get started. So for this example, what I'm using is keyword chef. 
And what Keyword Chef does, it allows you to see those low competition keywords. So if you are in a manifestation niche, uh, you can see that how to manifest a smaller forehead is a very low competition keyword. So uh, a forum, which is Quora, is number three. And a website, which is number one, has a very low domain authority. And I will see that once we go to the SERPs, I'll insert the keyword here. And I have a keywords everywhere plugin. And what it does, it shows you the DA, the most DA, which is domain authority. And as you can see, the website on the first page of Google has domain authority of 11. And we can absolutely fight that. What I will do then is I will go to the website. And in this example, it seems like we don't have many subheadings. But if we did, it would be very tiresome to try and copy and paste everything. So, and if I were to come up with the most detailed outline ever, I would do that for every website that I think is relevant. So I would do that for other websites as well. But for the demonstration purposes, I will do it. I will do uh, the outline generation based on the one website only. So what I'll do, I'll go to the URL. Then what I did, I have developed a very simple script with ChatGPT. All it does, it copies the H2s and H3s and H1s. So I'll press this button here. Now it says outline copied to clipboard. I'll go to Google Docs and I'll paste it over. And some it copies everything on the page. So rubbish like leave a reply, recent content and everything else will be here as well. And we'll just delete that. As you can see, it's a very simple outline. So we have our H2, which is manifest a small forehead. Then we have the H2, accept your forehead for what it is. Ignore your forehead, focus on the things you do like. Just have some fun. Affirmations on having fun and wrap up. And again, if I were to do it like seriously, uh, the way I'm doing it uh, day in and day out, I would do I would repeat the same procedure for as many websites on the first page as I want. So I would have uh, outline number two, outline number three, outline number four. Just imagine for a second that I did that. So then I'll copy this. I'll go to chat GPT, paste this simple command, which is suggest an outline, a blog post outline based on the below. And then I'll copy over the actual outline. This is it. And here it goes. Here is a potential outline for a blog post based on the provided information, introduction. Introduce the topic of manifesting, explain how the law of attraction works. Then accept your forehead for what it is, ignore your forehead altogether. And it even suggests some talking points within that H2. So right now it's just expanding rather on what is what has been copied above. Just have some fun. Okay, my second command would be analyze the above and suggest additional subheadings and talking points that are missing and we'll hit enter. And here we go, here are a few additional subheadings and talking points. Provide context for why some people may desire to manifest a small forehead. This is actually pretty good because it has to be a very relatable scenario. So in your introduction, you can actually in fact, talk about why some people want a smaller forehead. And right now it's again, it expands on what is being written above, like for the ignore your forehead altogether. It says, explore the concept of radical self-acceptance, share strategies for redirect intention. Mm -hmm. So basically what it did, it filtered it went through the H2s and it expanded on them even further. 
so you have some some of the things that never occurred in the original outline and command number three so if we want to make it even better we'll ask directly what is missing what information is missing from the above outline and I cannot spell today sorry guys And here it goes. I can feel it already. It is important to note that the provided outline does not include any information about how to actually use the law of attraction to manifest a small forehead. While the outline does include some general information, it does not provide any specific guidance. Additionally, the outline does not include any information about the potential risks or drawbacks of attempting to manifest small foreheads. Finally, the outline does not include any information about seeking professional help and support for issues related to body image and self-acceptance. And this is actually huge. So this is going above and beyond the initial topic. So here we're talking about practical steps. Then we have some psychological ramifications of not accepting yourself for who you are. And this is big and this is deep. And you can run these kind of commands uh, again and again, so we can regenerate the response just for the fun, just for the sake of it. And ChatGPT is shifting gears, and it's talking about the science behind the law of attraction, the relationship between the law of attraction and manifestation. Specific manifestation techniques. So if we go back uh, to the initial outline, here it is. Accept your forehead, ignore your forehead, focus on the things you do like, and affirmations. Um, it's basically, it says, use the affirmations. And here, ChatGPT says that it is quite thin in terms of the practical exercises and applications. That's why it states that specific manifestation techniques like meditation, visualization, and some other techniques may be missing from the above. And again, alternatives to using a law of attraction, I think it's an enormous topic that is missing from the 99% of manifestation articles. Because sometimes manifestation just doesn't, doesn't work, and sometimes manifestation is a symptom of something more profound and deep, like lack of self-acceptance and, and such. So here it is. And then you can copy this over to your, to your favorite AI writer. You can even use ChatGPT. Use the information from the, from the original outline and the additional suggestions and generate a detailed outline on how to manifest a smaller forehead. And I will correct my spelling. It doesn't really matter since ChatGPT is smart, but still. Here's a detailed outline for the blog post on manifesting small forehead using the law of attraction introduction. Explain the concept, the science behind the law of attraction. So here we're given more context to what law of attraction really is with uh, studies and research. Then we are talking about the relationship between the law of attraction and manifestation, because those two can be used interchangeably but there are some important distinctions. Accept your forehead for what it is. Emphasize the importance of self-acceptance and self-love. Ignore your forehead altogether. Explore the concept of radical self-acceptance. Share strategies for redirection and tension. Focus on the things you do like. Discuss the role of positive self-talk in building self-esteem. Share examples of affirmations, have some fun. 
Explore the benefits of incorporating play and leisure activities into daily life and everything, all of this, the majority of it was missing from the initial article. Here, ChatGPT is talking about specific affirmations. Now the alternatives to using the law of attraction, again, a very underserved topic within the manifestation niche. Mm -hmm. And I like this last sentence, guys, like encourage readers to try out the strategies, yet encourage to seek additional support if needed. I think it's a very needed change when it comes to manifestation articles. And I'll copy this. Mm -hmm. And you can just see the before and after. This is before and this is after. A very detailed, very deep outline that will never be considered thin or unhelpful in my honest opinion. So if you like this little plugin here, which is a Chrome extension, I can give it away and command below with your questions and saying I want the Chrome extension. And I will be sure to either run a giveaway or just straight up uh, give it away to everyone. Hope this video was helpful. Like and share if it was. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.